Hey y'all, welcome back to another long-awaited art video. My goal for the rest of this year is to honestly start being consistent with my art videos because I'll start a painting and then just not have the energy to finish it. Or I'll feel like I ran out of ideas and I have to come back to it. So this is one of those paintings that actually took me more than two weeks to complete because I kept having different ideas every time I came back to it. This painting was actually very difficult to complete because my weakest point in painting is blending. I just recently taught myself how to actually blend skin tones and blend for depth. Here you'll see me trying to blend the face to make it more prominent from the neckline as well as the cleavage. Acrylic paint is really wet and slippery, so every time I tried to blend, I tried to make sure that the paint was actually starting to dry so it was more sticky, or I would use a drier brush to blend what was together. But every time the dry brush got a little too wet, it started melting rather than blending. Another art insecurity I have is painting hands. So especially hands this small and detailed, I was trying really hard to make them still look feminine and not look childish. So here's me setting up my laptop to make sure that I make the skin tones as close to what the actual skin colors are. This is actually my first time painting the male body, so I was actually pretty nervous about how to try to blend the lines enough to not make them look like fake abs or fake muscles at all. Here goes another example of what I was talking about, about acrylic paint being wet. It's some paint is like it's just not thick enough. So I do use cornstarch sometimes to thicken the paint, but I didn't do that this time. I was just allowing certain layers to be blended on other browns that I was using. And here goes the dry brush effect that I was mentioning. It actually started to help differentiate the edge of her face, but in the beginning I was struggling. Now this is where it got difficult because both SZA and Travis Scott had black hair in the music video. On top of that, SZA was wearing a black jumper. This was the point where I started actually getting frustrated and took a few days to come back to it when I had a clear headspace because her hair was easy to pretend to swirl around as if it had waves in it but Travis Scott's hair was pretty hard to differentiate what type of braids he had. But of course, I'm a black woman and I'm gonna prevail against any odds thrown against me. But this is around the time where I took a few days break to come back to it. Well, after allowing myself some cool down time, I realized there needed to be some type of pizzazz to it. So I outlined Travis Scott and SZA in glue and put blue glitter around them. I also decided their chains might as well be sparkly. But of course I got too happy and was trying to be grown and boom, there is my horrific mistake of trying to fringe her bangs. I actually panicked in this moment and was trying to figure out if I could make that brown again. And I couldn't, so I was like, all right, forget it. I'm just gonna make a butterfly on her face. And then a 
of course I run into another problem because the black of the monarch butterfly blended too much with her jumpsuit. So I tried outlining it in white and it just turned out horrible. So I actually came back to it another few days later and tried again and was like, all right, I'm just gonna have to figure something out with this white outline. And of course, after staring at it for a while, I decided it was utterly disgusting. So I outlined everything in blue glitter again and it actually helped tie into the shadow effect for Travis Scott and SZA. After realizing all this glitter, it needed some extra pizzazz in the background, so I added gold flakes, and I'm really happy with the results.